quick! Sword and Shield are about to no longer be the newest Pokemon games! We have to finish all of our Swish videos! Quick, quick, start the big one! Why every Pokemon is in Galar? You know, I think that sentence is a lie. They specifically aren't. Well, I don't mean that every Pokemon is in Galar. I mean, why every Pokemon that is in Galar is in Galar. And we all know why the Gen 8 Pokemon are there. Every Gen 8 Pokemon is British! But when talking about the dex cuts, Game Freak also mentioned that the Pokemon actually in Galar have a reason for being there. It's something Pokemon is no stranger to. Alola also had most of the tropical equatorial mon that already existed in their region too. And also, we've already talked about this in some capacity, our video about what the Galar Pokedex got wrong. Yeah, like missing half of them. No, like why are Zatu and Serena here, but not Granbull, which is based on an e English Bulldog. Well, we explained those in that video, sort of just going over a handful of seemingly mistakes. But today, we're going to briefly go over every Gen 1 through 7 Pokemon found on mainland Galar and explain why they are there. Oh, so no DLC. Exhilarating. So then, do we just go through like a list or do we categorize? Well, there's 400 mon in the Galar decks, so I'd better be quick whatever I do. Let's go by category. That way we can actually wipe a ton of them off of the list right from the start. The least interesting of them anyway, category one is Easy Peas, the Pokemon that are based on things that the UK does in fact have. Also, extra clarification, in case you didn't know, Galar is based on Great Britain, the main island of the United Kingdom, the British. However, it does seem to mostly pull just from England, one of the three countries that takes part of it. So it's basically if England took over the rest of Great Britain, which they've continually tried to do, basically. Anyway, uh, like Butterfree, the, the whole Butterfree line. We're gonna, we're gonna mention Pokemon and just know that we mean their entire line. Butterfree, it's a butterfly. The United Kingdom does in fact have butterflies within it. Krabby is a crab, also had by them. In fact, here are all of the Pokemon that are here just because the UK happens to have the same plants and animals. There's no other more interesting reason for them. And I did look into most of these. Like, I was thinking maybe Diggersby. Like, I know they have rabbits, but maybe a British person invented the excavator, huh? Nope, it's American. So I guess it's just here because rabbit. The UK has horses. They've got pumpkins, boars, bee flies, barnacles for days. They've even got cherry trees and spooky dead trees. It's quite simple. So here's all of the Pokemon in that category. So let's move on to a slightly more interesting, but still fast category. I'll call it the basically British already Pokemon category. These are Pokemon that directly relate to something about what is stereotypically British or are already based on something specifically British. Like Esper, which is based on the Scottish Fold breed of cat. Vanillux is based on a style of ice cream cone from and still popular in the United Kingdom. There's swords, knights, and princes, dragons. Sort of European as a whole, they are, but the UK is a big part of that. England especially. Lapras is basically the Loch Ness monster already. Also, plesiosaurs lived in what would eventually become the waters around Europe. Now Delmise. Well, one of the reasons the British Empire was able to dominate the world was their naval supremacy. Boats galore. And plenty sunk in warfare. And piracy, creating plenty of ghost ship and cursed treasure aboard me sunken ship stories, matey. Britain is also well known for its baking scene. So there's Slurpa. And you can't have Slurpuff without its partner line, Aromatisse. In fact, I should probably also mention this at some point. A lot of the Pokemon that were included in the Galar decks may not actually have something directly related, but their partner Pokemon line is related. And these two are partner Pokemon lines. Another good example would be, like, a Selgor. A Selgor itself doesn't really have anything, but Shelmet and a Scavalier, they are knights. Mainly French knights, but still, they're knights. And since Shelmet evolves into a Selgor, well, it, a Selgor needs to be here too, because obviously. A anyway, Passimian is a rugby playing lemur. Rugby is big in England, and Oranguru is its partner mon. But also, the British Empire and India, where many gurus are from, share a lot of history. Scrafty is a hoodlum punk, here for the same reason as Toxtricity and Obstagoon and Team Yell. This is the birthplace of punk culture. And London is basically always under construction, and also, like every other major city, has a lot of trash. Jellicent are quite fancy, and a lot of our fa 
fancy stereotypes come from British nobility. That's also a part of why certain posh British accents we immediately assume with being a noble or rich and fancy, even if they're not. Well, except for the Cockney accent, that one is for orcs with a K. That's a tricky situation it is. You see, the normal accent is seen as a oi, this boy, he's smarty he is. I bet he goes on Skillshare, which just so happens to be today's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators to learn new skills or to perfect their crafts. If you've ever wondered how we edit noggin videos, what with the nice wiggly mon and the motion graphics and all, you can check out Animating with Ease in After Effects with Jake Bartlett. Even at my level, it really amped up my smoothing and animation. The graph is a godsend when making fun and engaging movements. I mean, do you see how much this thing moves? Heck, this class was a blessing to my productivity just because it goes over the shortcuts and hotkeys. There are like 600 of them, and it turns out, only only about 20 are useful, just like Pokemon. It's easy to learn in because Skillshare makes it less of a chore, with short, goal-focused lessons and hands-on practice to better your skill no matter your level. There's no distracting ads taking up space and you can speed up or slow down any video you like. Plus, they keep adding amazing content in all sorts of categories like photography, arts and crafts, business even, oh, and productivity. That's a really helpful one these days. Now, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free one-month trial of Skillshare's premium membership so you can explore your creativity immediately. So click the link roll right there. What are you still doing here? Go, go, get it, cross the screen. Like an orc. Yeah, this is a terrible Corkney accent. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Where were we? Western Basculin also has that old Englishman jaw and sideburns look to it. Also, it's a bass, and they have those. And chandeliers are fancy as heck! British nobles loved them as status symbols, and lanterns and candles like this were used all over the world. And the world happens to include the United Kingdom. Go figure. I hear they're trying to vote against that, though. Uh, but also, if I had to figure out what specific style of chandelier chandelure is, there is an argument to be made with the neoclassical Adams style of chandelier, with only a few arms and a usually rounded centerpiece. It also just happens to be from Scotland. Keeping goldfish was also a huge thing for nobles to do in the Victorian era, and Phoebus is also a bass, and that's good enough of a reason, but Milotic could pull a bit from Selkies, a Scottish and Norse form of beautiful siren, essentially. Well, it's not all tradition and culture. Plenty of Pokemon are here in Galar because they are partially inspired by British invention! And that's our next category. Take cottony, for example. I mean, cotton is important everywhere. Also, it grows in most places, but interestingly, not Great Britain. So what's the deal here? Well, thanks to industrialization, by the mid-19th century, the United Kingdom actually produced more than a half of the world's cotton fabric, despite it basically not growing there. You see, the English just invented the industrial loom, the knitting machine. So they imported cotton from all over the world and turned it into fabric faster than any of those fabric people that are doing it by hand could possibly do. Yeah, machines taking human jobs. <clears throat> Progress! Who needs ice caps? And speaking of the Industrial Revolution, it's Kling Klang. While toothed gears were invented by the ancient Greeks, they were still immeasurably important during the Industrial Revolution, which England spearheaded. Even Kling Klang's Pokedex entries say that they appeared around the Industrial Revolution, so realistically, they were probably from Galar and were brought over to Unova. And that was the earlier game, so that's where we saw them first, so I guess it's a Unova Pokemon, ooh. So Volt is a railgun, and the railgun was originally invented by a Frenchman in World War I, though only on paper. The Germans in World War II, oh, those ones, uh, they tried building one and concluded that it too was theoretically possible, just not yet. It was in the 60s that the Australians finally built one, but it was never viable for non-experimental use. In the 1980s, Australians and Americans worked together on further advancing them, and since the 90s, the British and American armies and navies have been continuing their development, and have made numerous working models. None are actively used for defense purposes though, but yeah, I guess that's British enough. Those who made the railgun a reality were basically England's kids, and now partially the Brits themselves. Also, stag beetles do live in England, so that's a good enough of a reason on its own. I just like history and talking about it. So, the drill. It has been around for like 35,000 years, but the first industrial 
industrial drill, the first one powered by a motor, was invented by a Scotsman in Australia. Also, moles live in the UK, and rhinos are a classic zoo animal. Since I haven't mentioned that yet, the British also invented modern zoos. Zoos for science and sustainability, rather than just rich people showing off their foreign animals. Zoo animals will be a different category, but while on the topic of drill mining, industrial mining is British for sure. In fact, it's one of the reasons the British Empire took over so much land. They wanted the valuable underground resources like gemstones and caves, which they had on their own land too, but not as much. Uh, anyway, here's Sableye and Gigalith. Okay, so Hitmonchan specifically. Fisticuffs is a very British thing, but also boxing gloves were invented in the 1740s by an Englishman, who also happens to be the guy who invented boxing. And we can include Wobbuffet here too, because it's a punching bag. These were not invented in the UK, but of course, because of their boxing culture, they do play a major role there. Fighting was, and still is to a point, a very popular sport. So let's also put them a champs here. I mean, they're even wearing boxing speedos. That's following rules and regulations of things like boxing. Also, speedos were invented by a Scotsman. Get wrecked. So BHM and LGM, the UK is no stranger to UFO sightings, but most places aren't. Uh, though there is some extra bit of cultural connection here. Some say that those line drawings of giants and things in England were made by aliens. Also, aliens abducting sheep is a big cultural stereotype thing, and it's even mentioned in the Pokédex. Behem's abduct Wooloo. But there's more, and it has to do with Behem's design, as it's based not just on an alien in disguise, but also on secret agents, people in disguise. And either way, what is their disguise? It's a trench coat. Guess who invented the trench coat? Yep, in the 1850s, the fashion industry in the United Kingdom made trench coats. And they were so nice that they were later adopted and used by the UK Army. They're the official raincoats. Now, I've mentioned before that the electric radiator and stovetops were invented by British folk when explaining Santa Scorch's design origins, and that also could be why Torkoal is here, with its furnace oven shell. But also, Galapagos tortoises are another classic zoo animal. Octillery is super easy. The first artillery artillery cannon was invented by Henry Shrapnel. His last name was Shrapnel. Isn't it amazing that he went on to invent the artillery cannon? Oh, or do you think Shrapnel is called Shrapnel because it's named after him. Now, the modern form of seismograph was also invented by an Englishman, so there's seismitode. As for keeping tempo, like with Temple, musicians usually will use a metronome, which wasn't an English invention at all. However, the first patented and commercially successful metronome was. The full history is that the metronome was first invented by an Andalusian and later improved in the Netherlands and finally improved by a German dude while living in England. And so patented it in England and sold it for from England and it was an English thing that was sold all over the world. Now the Duosian line is a bit odd for this invention category, but it's fine. Cells were first discovered, described, and studied by English scientist Robert Hooke in the 1600s. And boy, I sure do love learning things tangentially through Pokemon. If you do too, subscribe and hit the bell. Now then, new category, zoo animals. As I briefly mentioned, it was the British who invented the modern zoo, gathering animals from around the world in the pursuit of science and education and later preservation. A lot of the more popular animals at these first zoos are exactly the ones that we think today of as zoo animals. Think elephants, giraffes, tigers, and bears, oh my. And a lot of the Pokemon that at first seem out of place in Galar are the ones that are based on animals brought into these first British zoos, like all the bears and Lipard the leopard. Many species of wild dogs and cats too, kind of like Eevee maybe. You got hippos. Hippos were extremely popular. And anteaters, Tapirs? I mean, heck, the current oldest living tapir in the world is at a British zoo. And these zoos are known for importing many smaller exotic animals too, like poison dart frogs and numerous exotic reptiles and birds. And actually, speaking of Zatu, next category, British expeditions and artifact hunting. The Brits were very interested in scientific expedition, and many would travel the world documenting everything and bringing back all of their findings, museums, 
and exhibitions were all the rage, and that's also why many seemingly out of place Pokémon are in Galar. Zatu is a totem pole Kachinka doll, precisely the kinds of things that they would bring back. Also, Egyptian sarcophagi and other things like jackals for the zoos. They'd take ancient statues and artifacts from ruins all over the world, really, thus explaining why basically all of the ancient artifact Pokémon are here. And you'll notice actually that a lot of these Pokémon are actually pretty Japanese. And well, Japan was one of the furthest civilizations from them, and their culture was vastly different. So, some of the most famous exhibitions at various museums in London were of Japanese clothing and Japanese stories, Japanese tool and art and depictions of their architecture. In fact, here's a great fun fact, one of these British scholars was actually the first person to write down and document various stories about yokai. Up until that point, many of them were stories told by oral tradition and nothing more. And that also explains these yokai Pokémon. Like, C-Dot and Lotad, yeah, they have acorns and lily pads in the UK, but their later evolutions are extremely Japanese, and that's why. And as I said previously, combat was always a popular sport in the UK, but these new Eastern influences started catching on, and soon enough, karate and other fighting styles from the East would take hold here too. Same with the practice of keeping bonsai trees, and making Japanese Japanese gardens with them. And of course, with artifact museums and zoos being as big as they were, so too were exotic greenhouses. So many plants were brought in as well, especially the most fascinating ones like the Rafflesia, and cactuses, and even the Mangosteen. The Mangosteen would eventually become a status symbol among the royals and the nobles as well. It was a very valuable fruit, and in 1855 they actually started being grown in England. Wow. So Serena has a very valid reason for being here. Now then, last category time, it's just other, also good enough reasons, like not solid or great reasons, but whatever it works, but also other. And Avalug actually has quite a few good reasons, but so many that fit so many different categories, I decided to just put it in the other category. Firstly, it is a turtle tortoise thing, plenty of those in the UK, but it also may pull from the Aetosaur, which happened to have lived in what would eventually become Europe. Also, also, Northern Scotland is no stranger to icebergs, blowing in. And also, 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 there's good old Project Habakkuk by the Allies in World War II, conceptualized by an Englishman and an Irishman, and put into motion by an admiral in the British Royal Navy, then built and tested in Norway and Canada. This project was to build an aircraft carrier ship mainly out of ice and wood shavings, basically a giant motorized iceberg built to lug planes around, and also mostly underwater, just like an iceberg. So maybe Avalug is quite British after all. Tour de Nador, though, I'm not positive. Matamata turtles are South American, and they were first scientifically described by a Frenchman. They aren't particularly zoo animals either. Like, they can be, but they're not well known as being that. And the other thing that Turtonator pulls from are landmines. And landmines aren't inherently British either. They were invented by the Chinese and then further improved by the Germans. The best I got is that some people, including people in the UK, like keeping Matamata turtles as pets, and also land mines were very heavily used by and against the British in World War II, but that's more so just Europe in general. Oh well. It's better than nothing. Driftblim is a bit more solid. Using hot air to make balloon things float up has been around since the Three Kingdoms period of China, and the first manned hot air balloon ride was done by two Frenchmen. However, that same hot air balloon is currently in a London museum, and also the current world record holder for the longest journey by hot air balloon is held by a British man. Also, the UK does have hot air balloon festivals, so I guess that's good enough. For Cincino, I could put it with the British animals category because chinchillas are popular pets all over the world, though they come from South America. But these Pokémon have a unique attribute I wanted to talk about, their extreme amount of fur, which people use to make scarves and stuff. This is a very similar feature to the English Angora, a breed of rabbit that people make yarn out of, just 
plucking away at the fur while it sits happily in your lap. Adorable. Before the motorized loom, clothes were kinda hard because cotton doesn't really grow in Great Britain, so of course, sheep and the English Angora were very popular livestock animals to have because their fur is so good. Angoras as a whole come from Turkey though, so it's not a strong connection. Hence this other slash good enough category. Gothitelle pulls from Gothic Lolita fashion and its name is even French and Italian, and its almost witchy supernatural female powers vibe is very European as a whole, which I suppose includes the UK, but doesn't directly reference it. The best I got is tangential. Gothitelle's connection with astrology and astral projection is in line with the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, a British secret society studying occultism. They were sort of the founders of modern alchemy and occultism in the West. Theoretically speaking, Pokemon references this all the time with their references to alchemy, and Sword and Shield even named their ghost-type gym leader Alistair, after arguably the most important member of the Golden Dawn, Alistair Crowley, who went on to write many foundational books all about the understanding of occultism, and the stars, and alchemy. So yeah, it's British, but it's tangentially Gothitelle. And it's also tangentially sort of Sylvalli. The foundations of modern alchemy and Western occultism started in the UK, and Sylvalli was the Aether Foundation's attempt at creating an artificial Arceus via a chimera. It's a combination of magic and science that's quite literally alchemic. And then the Dusk Noir line. It's partially based on the personification of death, uh, kind of as a whole, but you could get more specific and say it's based on the Grim Reaper. Our most modern depiction of the literal Grim Reaper is a male skeleton in a black hooded robe wielding a scythe, and he was primarily seen in art originating from Germany and, of course, England. And also a little bit of the rest of Europe too, kind of all over the place, but mostly Germany and England. So it's not perfect, but it's a good enough reason. Uh, ghost stories are also everywhere too. Delibird is a rock hopper penguin, which has nothing to do with the UK besides zoos, I suppose, but also Delibird is Santa. But that's also a worldwide thing. Uh, but notably, when looking at the history of Christmas, you get to Yuletide, what it was before that was arbitrarily made about Jesus. And if you go even further back, it was just celebrating the winter solstice, which of course was incredibly important to the Neolithics who built Stonehenge, one of Great Britain's most famous structures. So again, eh, it's tangentially related, but I guess Christmas is important to the Brits, so it's there, but like, that's not a specifically British thing, but eh, Stonehenge, Yuletide, all it gets close enough, it's good enough. And another other reasoning is simply popularity. Pikachu and Eevee could go here, because like, there will never be a Pokemon game without them, but I mean the UK has mice and it has generic mammals, but still. Popularity is for sure a deciding factor, like with Mimikyu. Sure, there are plenty of fey creatures from British folklore that thematically sort of fit with Mimikyu, you know, disguising themselves, being jealous and angry, and then doing mean things to people. Yeah, it fits, but it's loose enough that it's probably just here because it's popular. And then Rotom. I mean, I kind of doubt there will ever be a Pokemon game without Rotom in it also. It's just so important now. It's like everything. It's your Pokedex sometimes, it's your phone other times, and it's even your bike now. Rotom is just such a part of the Pokemon world now. And Ditto is popular too, and it's just a science experiment kind of gone awry, so it really can be anywhere. I could also see popularity as an additional factor for Gyarados and Gengar, but the UK has plenty of tales and folklore about ghosts and sea monsters. In fact, let's also put Clefairy and Togepi's lines in here. Fey creatures and folklore like this is very European as a whole, and the UK is a part of that. And why pick these Pokemon over others that may fit the bill a bit better? Because of popularity. And the same can be said of Onyx. It's popular, sure, but other than that, like, it's boulders. The UK does have boulders, I guess, but that's kind of a lame reason, isn't it? And the stone that's called Onyx isn't particularly common there either, so the best I can think of is that, like, ancient British construction, aka Stonehenge and similar things that they built. It's just a bunch of big rocks stacked up on top of each other, kind of like Onyx, hmm? And I could see popularity being the reason for Tyranitar, too. I mean, it's a kaiju. I guess kaiju movies are popular enough everywhere now? Some say it's a T-Rex, but those live
lived in what today is North America, and some say it's an armadillo-girdled lizard. Those are found in Southern Africa, so it could be a zoo animal thing, but it's not a well-known zoo animal. Honestly, I think they included Tyranitar here both because it's popular and just so that it could be a sort of rival to the new Pokemon, Duraludon, as mentioned in their dex entries. Together as a pair, they are references to Godzilla and Mechagodzilla, or Bemular, and the steel-suited Bemular. Well, what do you think? Do you think Tyranitar is based just on Godzilla? If so, you're probably wrong. Here's a video all about that. Click it now. You'll like it, trust me. And also, what other reasons do you think I missed or sort of glossed over with some of the other Galar Pokemon? Let me know down below. And until next time, never stop using your noggin.